Are you a beginner in VBA and are you struggling with nested dependent procedures in VBA? This video might give you some ideas. Hi, I'm Philip from CodeCabinet.com and this is another episode of Let's Code. If you don't know the Let's Code format, this is not a real tutorial style video, but it's rather me coding a little bit and letting you watch and sharing my thoughts with you. So if you are looking for a tutorial style video, this is probably not for you. But anyway, let's um, talk about today's code. Recently, um, I saw a forum post from someone who is fairly new to VBA and wrote a bit of code which mostly works but um, he was trying to separate the code in different procedures trying to separate the responsibilities a bit and reuse part of the code and that's where he kind of got to the forum and said yeah well i'm struggling here um, it does not really work. The independent bits work, but I can't fit it all together. And one particular um, question was how to exchange data between the separate procedures. And that is what I wanted to cover originally in this video. However, um, during coding, and, and you will, I cut out a bit of uh, different options and stuff because I did not really implement it. But during coding, I realized that the original core problem of passing data around between the procedures goes mostly away if you structure the procedures and their um, interconnectivity the way it makes sense for the requirements and for the process. So um, this is not about data exchange between procedures, but it's rather about how to structure dependent nested procedures. So uh, you, you got event procedure, the typical button click, and that should prepare some stuff here and then uh, pass that on to there, that it is stored in the database and with the return, a report should be printed. That is the basic setup here. And yeah, well, the, the data depends on each other on how to handle that if something goes wrong on that end, something goes wrong on that end, and that is what I'm going to cover here. Okay. So, let's code! To make the code work, I had to create a tiny sample application. It just contains this little table with no data in it, but the table has to exist for the code to work. And I had to create this tiny form. That is just a dummy that contains some controls that were referenced in the code. And without the form and the controls on it, I couldn't make the code compile at all. So I created this tiny dummy form here. The most interesting part we are going to look at is the code behind it. Here we are in the code and this is the click event handler procedure for the button from the form. And this commented outline is kind of manifesting the problem, but it's not the, the core issue here. If we remove the comment mark here and look at the statement, it's supposed to output a report with the name stated here in the snapshot format that is a format containing the report layout and the data similar to a PDF file and that is actually not available anymore in access it has been there in the past but nowadays you can directly output a PDF file and that is what I would recommend to do here but um, this code comes from an older version access database and the PDF format wasn't available there. So um, back then the snapshot format was probably a valid choice. Now, this is the core issue with this single line here. The path and file name variables, they are not 
defined. So if I try to compile the code, I get that error. And that is what the whole video and the whole problem is about. To get to the bottom of this, let's look at this procedure. It's a little bit hidden up here and I would actually always recommend to put at least one blank line between the um, procedure header here and the first actual executable statement. Let's look at this function here. So let's switch to procedure view to focus on this function. So let's uh, pick this apart line by line. The first line is a call to another procedure and the FCT prefix here suggests this could be a function, but if it is, the return value is discarded because we just use the call statement here. Then we check the value of a form control. And then some variables are defined, a constant, and now it's becoming interesting because here this is the path variable. And that is the variable that we needed in the calling procedure here. And that path is just assigned um, a string concatenation. And here you should pay attention that that is actually a bit important. The direct whatever. And here it is again direct. And now look here. That these are actually references to form controls. And that is not obvious here at all. We just can... Um, deduct it because it is up here defined in, in that statement that we can know the direct is referencing a form control. The file name is the other variable that we needed in the calling procedure in the original event handler procedure. And actually let's format the code a little bit better here. So this is a two line statement and the file name is built from a uh, value in uh, the form formatted in, uh, in a special way, probably a date, the order date name suggests that. Then there's a control name appended here. The subfolder is this constant here. And then we read the SV file tables and uh, retrieve the file number and append it to the file name variable here. And then finally, here is another procedure called SV file. No, that does not say anything to me. I haven't got no clue what that is supposed to do, but we'll look at it in a minute. We start by looking at the function call, but before we do that, once again, keep this in mind. Okay, now to the function call. This is the function, function scan project name. It has two variables here, a constant defined here. That, that is actually some, uh, something I like. And then fills the project number variable just with a string concatenation. Once again, referencing the form fields and concatenating here them here. And then the project name whatever that is, maybe it's supposed to be the project name is read from the file system. And the dir function is retrieving the first directory because that is here, the first directory matching this pattern with that star at the end. So if in this base folder is any directory beginning with the project number and any characters after that, then the actual folder name will be retrieved from the file system. If there is no folder, it will be empty and then the message box will display it. Here, this form control will be filled that we encountered a couple of times before with that. And now here is something missing for a function. This function has no return value. And that is, well, unusual and it's not as intended because actually function, functions should return a value. But 
I guess the person who wrote this code was not aware of that and it's he or she was kind of misusing this control in the form as a buffer for the return value of the function. And that is a key insight here because the question was about how to pass data between nested procedures. And this is a kind of a clutch to make that work. And that, that is something we need to address. Okay, let's take a quick look at the other procedure that was called. Here's BF open folder, uh, BF folder open once again, and there was that file number function. Let's jump to that one. Okay, that is reading a current file number probably. Once again, from that SV files table from the file number field with the same criteria, once again, that direct reference to the form. Oh, and here it is again. And once more here, once again, the reference to the form field and the subfolder, that is the table field, and that is referencing the argument passed into the procedure here. The nz function here will replace any null value written uh, read from the table with a numerical zero. So if there's no record, this will be zero. And if it is zero, we will jump to that uh, jump mark here. And that is, well, I, I absolutely dislike those go to jump marks. It is defined down here. So if it's zero, we will continue the code down here and insert a record into the files table. That doesn't make sense because if there is no record, we insert one. Okay. Now, if there was a file number read, we increment it by one, store that in the new number, new no variable and then update the table and set the file number to the new number once again with the criteria that was used above. So uh, first let's change the formatting, the indention and I don't like uh, the multi-line declare statements. It was actually technically correct in this case but I still don't like it so I put the variable declarations on different lines and this constant mm, we'll we'll leave it here for a minute but i think that could be moved elsewhere now here for that format expression i don't like references to form fields inside functions very much i would rather pass in these values as arguments, but this is a function inside a form. So fair enough, I think we can leave it that way, referencing the form fields, but only, only if the current form, the form that uh, contains these, the function is the same as the one uh, containing the um, controls where the data is read from. I would never read, read data from a different form. Is that If this is a different form, then the function should be either moved to that form or it should get these values as arguments or, or whatever that needs to be decided then. But I assume this is the current form and I replace the reference with the me expression to reference the current form here. Reading from the file system that will probably work. I don't see any problem here that debug is not mine. I remove that. But the core issue here is the return value. This statement is misusing the form control as a return value. And this is the actual variable. Now we'll transform the function that it actually returns a value. By using the function name here and assigning the value from this variable to the function name, 
this will cause the function to return the value. And that is the key issue here. And this is a line we will put somewhere else because I don't want um, the message inside um, this, this function. So it was called here and now I insert that here. Put a little comment here, retrieved, uh, let's say extracted from the function just as a note for further reference. So we changed our function to actually return a value and as that is the project name, let's say project name as string and now we assign the project name to the return value of the function. So you remember that was the return value so actually these two reference the same value and once again this one is the control in the form that was used as a buffer for the return value. So essentially all these three, three variables or controls here are actually referencing the same thing. So we replace them one by one. Now it becomes apparent these are both checking for the same conditions. So we can convert that into a multi-line if statement. Now this can go and we insert the end if here. This is not relevant anymore. Now we got the message box here. Well, okay. We look at these variables here. The path is assigned to this one. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this string constant here and this define constant here. They are both identical. So I think we should extract the folder name constant here to a higher level. So I remove it inside this function and put it on module level here. And it is inside available inside the module only that would automatically be the case because the module is the class module of a form but I still prefer to use an explicit access modifier so I say private const. I prefer to use uppercase variables and from what I can deduct now this is the base folder and we will append stuff to that folder. So I rename this to base folder and go back to my scan func scan project name where I extracted that and replace this with my new constant name so that the code still compiles. And this part of the path here that was the same as the base folder. So I replace it here to remove the duplication. Okay, let's try if that still compiles. That is actually good. I recommend always compile your code because that will point out any major issues with the code right away. Now to the next thing here. You remember direct that is referencing the form field and now we have that in our project name variable because it was retrieved here. So project name is essentially the same as the direct form control. Now let's insert that in both places. Project name here and project name there. This is a basic assignment. We can leave it that way. Now the file name is built from the subfolder constant and that table lookup. Well, let's keep this in mind for a minute and look at the other leave note of the code. This 
SV file no procedure, which is here. The SV file number is reading the current file number with this expression. And let's kind of move the, here the procedure around. I just cut the function and put it to the bottom so that we can have a better look at these two. So here is the file number retrieved and that is the, essentially the same logic once again, but down here we, we take care of null values while we don't do that here. So that, that is probably a potential bug in the code. I cannot know what, what was the intention here, but I will assume that instead of having no value at all for the lookup, would be better to have the zero appended there. And now I would like to extract this code into a function on its own because it's duplication here. So let's create a new function that is just called current, uh, I would say it's a private function. And hmm, I would say get current file no. And we need once again this direct variable and uh, the subfolder. So we need the project name because that is essentially what the um, direct control contains and the subfolder and this is going to be I guess it's going to be a long value and that is just a simple wrapper around this code so we have get current file number is this and we will reference the project name here and the subfolder there. That's just a single line assignment. And now this function will return the value read from the table. And if there is no value or no record, then it will return a zero as current file number. Now I will replace this with the get current file number function. Now we can put it on the same line. So this will append zero. That is a little bit um, of change in the behavior of the code, but I think it's rather intended the way I wrote it now than it was originally, but I can be mistaken. Can't know, but that's the way it is now. Now, this can go as well and be replaced with the current file number. I'm not interested in that debug output here. That is a meaningless name and I'm going to change it right away. And I will, let's name it increment sv file number. And as before, we are going to need these uh, the the project name once again, because I would like to get rid of that direct thingy here once again. So do that right now. Now that references the project name that is passed in here. So we, we read the current file number with our new function. If the current file number is zero, then go to insert data. And that is going right away. So going away. So so here we are. If the, the current file number is a zero, then we just insert it. Else comes this stuff, we increment the file number and then update the table. Of course, that exit sub is not required anymore, but we need an end if statement here. And this will increment the file number by one. We change this 
over here and we need the project name once again here. So that is going to be incremented. So I'm actually a bit unsure how to proceed here. Just to clarify my reasoning, this procedure will mainly retrieve the path and file name. The issue with that is it will retrieve them and it includes that call to increment the file name. And I guess that file name should only be incremented once this output was successful. Because if you have an error here and cannot output the file, then nevertheless, the file number was incremented before. The, the total code structure is not ideal here. And I'm not, um, I, I have not enough information to decide what is the best approach for the intentions of the person who, is actually, uh, who has actually written the code. So I'm a bit unsure how to proceed here. So well, after um, a little bit of reasoning, it has become pretty clear because this is, this whole block is basically um, not working well the way it is right now. Because currently, in, in this procedure, if um, that is called and there is no project name, this will not retrieve the path and the file name. So the BH folder open procedure is terminated and then we need, we, we still will continue with this code, but that cannot work because the path to output the PDF or the snapshot version of the report, it does not exist yet. So it's this code cannot possibly work. And reasoning here is I would join, actually join both, um, both functions. That might not be the ideal solution in the long run, but um, I think for now, this is uh, the reasonable best approach. So I'll just move all the variables up here and I rather prefer a constant be a little bit a part of that. So we put those there. And the next part would be uh, this stuff here. So, and now this stuff goes up here as well. So now the BH folder open is not required here anymore. So we can eliminate it and move this procedure down here so that the increment file number will only be called after all that stuff succeeded. Now, quick look, the doc name, I think I would move that up here as well. This, that is open for another debate if uh, all the declarations should be at the top of the module or further down the line. But for now, I put it up here and assign that name to the to that uh, string value here, and then I can replace the duplicate string with the st doc name. And well, the report will be output and then opened. I'm not sure if that is actually intended, but I um, I will leave it that way because I cannot know. So let's look at the procedure now we retrieve the project name here. If the project name is not defined, so we put output that message box and exit the procedure. I would rather write it this way, but uh, that is ab ab absolutely debatable if that is better. And now the most crucial thing is, does the code compile? Um, and it does not. 
So this is actually a bit um, of an interesting error because it took me a couple of seconds to actually find that and I put the video on hold. The argument not optional error. It is the correct error message, but this being highlighted is totally misleading because it's something else. Our get current file name function requires the project name and the subfolder to actually work. And I forgot that down here as well because we need to pass in the project name and the subfolder name to the function, otherwise it cannot work. And this is, I believe, the cause for that error. Now the error is gone. So the code compiles our BH folder open procedure that is not required anymore because we moved all the stuff up here into the event handler. Might not be the absolute best approach, but I think it's reasonable to do that here. And let's do a little bit of cleanup. So we'll reference that control in the form explicitly with the me keyword. So the main coding session is done here. And originally I thought, yeah, okay, uh, we came to code, we coded, we're done. But um, then I had the idea I should actually run the code. And shame on me because I should have known better. And um, well, as it always happens, uh, you write code and you run it the first time and it does not work. And I was kind of delusional not anticipating that. So we need to go back a little bit and then look at the code uh, because there are a couple of tiny bugs in there I need to fix. And then we, um, well, we will see the result of the code and it is actually working and uh, the issues were fairly minor. So I just ran the code and tried if it worked and there are some minor issues I'm going to fix and I'm going to show you um, while translating the code from German, I missed uh, these field names in the table, which have to be replaced by uh, the English variant that I chose. And another tiny bit here, the file name should contain a file extension. And I replaced it to... Um, be output in a PDF format because the snapshot format does not work anymore. And so the file name should actually at the end contain a .pdf file extension. Otherwise it would still work, but um, the file could not be opened easily because it would not be recognizable that it is a PDF file. So, okay, now let's try the code. This is the form and I close it and I actually created a dummy report here which does not contain anything but is just a report so that um, outputting a report works. Now this is our order form. So now I hit the command button and you see this is the report that is opened in the PDF viewer. I close that. Now, here's the report visible inside access. I think it's a bit uh, too much to do both, but I don't know what uh, the intentions were. And I close the report and down here in the Explorer folder, the PDF has been created with the file name that has been built by our code. And you see the S0 is the... Um, the current file number, which is now zero. And if I run the code again, all the same should happen. But here should be another file with an S1 extension. This is once again the PDF document. And you see this is the next file down here. So the code basically works. Okay, that's it for today. I hope 
you found that interesting, you learned maybe a little bit, even though it was not rocket science, nothing special, but um, if you're new to VBA, it's probably a good idea watching someone code. And there are still quite a few bits and pieces in the code that are not perfect. Um, the naming of the procedures, I improved that, but um, there are still uh, things where I kind of left variable names untouched or the, the command 101 click, that is something I absolutely loathe when I see that in code. So that is something you should absolutely fix. And um, this is not absolutely not the perfect code, but I wanted to focus on restructuring the code and make it work. So uh, if, if I had more time, um, then I would have made it even better. But I think I put your, your patience on a hard test here already. So um, I leave it as it is for now. I think the, the main things have become clear. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and next time I will be back and it will not be that long and that will be a classic tutorial style video. So if you like them better or if you like the Let's Code style, whatever, in any case subscribe to my channel please and um, if you like the video hit the like button. Thank you very much. Bye bye. bye.